Well, good morning and welcome to the all-inclusive confirmation communications with Church 360 Unite. My name is Andrew Osborne. Uh, there's my information up on the screen. I'm a content specialist here at Concordia Technology Solutions. Um, I love talking with churches and church workers about how our software can assist you in ministry. Um, so anytime you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, either through email or by phone. Uh, and I'd love to answer any questions you may have. Um, Concordia Technology Solutions is the church administration division of Concordia Publishing House. Uh, we Concordia Publishing House has been around for a long time. Uh, this was a booth that we had at the 1904 World's Fair um, just to show some of our rich heritage. Uh, but we've also been um, creating software and uh, developing that for uh, a long time also. Since 1984, we've been creating software. Uh, and we keep coming out with more and more uh, to try and help churches do ministry better. A few housekeeping items uh, before we get started today. This presentation will be about 60 minutes long, and we'll have time for questions at the end. Uh, the recording will be shared afterwards, so if you have to step out of the room for any reason, um, you can always come back and rewatch later. And you can ask questions throughout the present presentation. Um, however, I won't be able to stop and answer your questions until the very end. Um, that way we can make sure we hit everything that we need to today and uh, don't miss anything. Church 360 Unite is part of our um, church, church 360 uh, Complete Church Management Solution, uh, which combines Church 360 Unite, uh, which is our church website builder, um, Church 360 Members, which is our members database for your church, and Church 360 Ledger, which is our financial uh, package for your church. Um, we call it Church 360 Unite because um, it really unites a lot of what you do on your church website together. Um, it's first and foremost your church website builder, but it's also uh, your church blog, a members hub, uh, where you do file sharing, your calendar, and your mass email. So it really unites all of those different aspects of your church website um, and the different things you do online. Church 360 Unite is accessible anywhere uh, that you have an online um that you're able to get online. Uh, you can pull it up at your house, at the church, on the go, wherever you're at, you can access it. And our themes are mobile responsive. So whether you're on a desktop device or a mobile device, um, the theme will respond to that device. And uh, our your church websites will be securely hosted and backed up, and that's all done on our end. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about that, uh, but just to let you know, if you delete a page or something like that, uh, most of the time you're able to get it back uh, by calling in and uh, we can reset that for you. Uh, and then also there are tons of free updates, support, and training um, that go with this product. So um, anytime we come out with a new uh, update to the software, you'll get that for free. Um, you can get support if you have any questions or training as well. I have a few assumptions going into this presentation. First of all, I assume that you'll be at least a little bit familiar with church websites, how they work, and why you would want one. Um, I assume that you'll be new to Church 360 Unite. Um, if you've been around and you've used Church 360 Unite for a while, um, some of this may be uh, kind of low level for you, but uh, it's always good to get a refresher if you need it as well. Um, but if you're new to Church 360 Unite, a lot of this will be um, pretty useful stuff for you, I think. Uh, and give you an overview of the entire package. Uh, I assume that you're looking to communicate more efficiently uh, and find new ways to do that communication. Uh, and I have a few different goals for this webinar. The first goal is to explore all of the areas of Church 360 Unite. Um, I wanna kinda show you the ins and outs of all of the software. Um, I wanna help you understand the key features of the software, um, the things that you'll be using the most and uh, how you can access those. And I want to answer the question, how can Church 360 Unite help you communicate with your congregation? Um, there's a few different roles that go into uh, building your website. Um, there's the administrator, and uh, we'll look at that in terms of settings and users. Uh, we'll look at the designer in terms of themes and pages. 
We'll look at the publicity person in terms of feeds and lists, the board chairperson in terms of groups, and the ministry leader in terms of events, and the lay member in terms of directory and profiles. Um, so with all that, let's jump into it, and uh, I'll show you kind of the ins and outs of it. Um, so right away when you log into your website, <clears throat> you can see um, there's this bar at the top up here. This is the, um, the toolbar, uh, and you'll see I have six different buttons up here I can choose, um, and those will be different depending on what you're logged in as. So right now I'm logged in as an administrator, so I can see all of these. Uh, but if you're logged in as just a user, uh, which I'll, I'll explain a little more of the differences later on, um, but a user won't be able to see any of these um, because they're just a regular person using the website. Um, a publicity person may only see three of them, or uh, it just depends on what level you are logged in at to see how many are, will be up there. Um, but this is a, a website that we've put together as our, our training website. Um, to see kind of the details, let's start with settings. Uh, once you get into settings, you can see all of the details about your church, your name, email, phone, address, and time zone. Uh, and you can change all of those things. And those all flow directly to your home page and to really every page down here at the footer at the bottom of your page. So you can change this information by going to settings and changing it right here. Uh, we also have this calendars tab. <clears throat> and I'll get into more details later on about the calendars tab. Uh, but just to show you, this is where you can access different calendars and create new calendars and things like that. Uh, and again, we'll go into more detail later on. Next, we have the domain tab. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this is where if you purchase a, a separate domain uh, name, you can change that here. So for instance, if your church domain, uh, when you first purchase the software, it will be um, your church name, like zionlutheran.360unite.com. Uh, but if you want to change that to just zionlutheran.com, this is where you would do that. Uh, and it's a little more complicated than just entering it in here, but our software support team uh, would be willing to help you through that. Um, so you can always contact them and figure out how to do that. Next, we have the Google Analytics tab. Um, and <clears throat> uh, analytics are really an important part of your website. And being able to track who's on your website and what they're doing and um, finding the best way to shape your website. Uh, so a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different tools out there for analytics, uh, but Google's kind of the, the big dog in the, the field. <clears throat> and so we integrate Google Analytics into our software so that you can take advantage of uh, that free tool from Google. Uh, and you just insert your account number there, and that's another thing that our software uh, support team would be willing to help you with. And lastly, there's the integration tab. Um, <clears throat> this can integrate with uh, our other software, like Shepherd Staff, um, so that you can send things back and forth between them. And once more, that's another thing that our software support team would be more than willing to help you with. Um, now that we've gone through some of the settings, uh, when you first set up your account, you'll want to figure out who your users are. Um, you see we have this database here. This is a fictional database that we've put together for training purposes. Um, but you can change the role of each of these people um, simply by selecting the name and then clicking this change role button down here. And you'll see this one does, that person doesn't have an email address in there, so uh, you would have to insert their email address um, so that you can send them an invitation to join the website um, and set up their account. Um, but I can change <clears throat> Jacob Abbott from... Um, not having a role to being a regular user. So someone who has an account on the website um, just to log in and <clears throat> have access to the different things that members have access to. Um, you could change him to a publisher so that he can edit the content, um, a designer so he could edit the content and edit the themes and change the look of your website. Or you could make that person an, an administrator who has access to everything on the website. They have um, the ability to change the theme and the look of the website, as well as the settings and all the behind the scenes sort of things. Um, and depending on what package you have of Church 360 Unite, you'll have a limited number of administrators um, because you won't want everyone in your church to be able to change the website. Uh, you'll have certain people that <clears throat> have access to those things. Um, and you can always change around who has access at a certain time. Uh, for instance, if you start out and you only have two administrators, um, you're only able to use two. You could have your church secretary as one and your pastor as one. Uh, but if you have someone who comes in um, 
to kind of take over some things, you could maybe take your church secretary off and put that person on. Um, so you still have two, but it's two different people. Uh, so you would change their name there and then they will be able to log in. Um, you can add people to this page by clicking the add people button and that adds them to your website. So we'll do that and you can enter their name and their email address and it will send them um, login information and things like that. You can also bulk add people by downloading the CSV template and re-importing that uh, just to add multiple people at once. <clears throat> you can filter this uh, group of people. Let's say you're looking for David. Uh, oops, sorry. And you can filter down by the David, so you can uh, find them easily. Uh, you can change the uh, position of the different roles and things like that. And all of these are sortable uh, alphabetically. Um, so there's lots of ways you can use this. Um, and also under the Users tab, we have this mailing list button. Um, and we'll get into more details on this later, but um, this is how you would send emails out to your entire church. And again, we'll uh, look at that later on. Um, so now that we've looked through the Users tab um, and you have everyone set up in your church database, uh, you'll want to change your theme to make it look the way you want your church's website to look. Um, so we'll click on this Theme button here. And right away you see we have lots of different uh, theme options. Um, each of these gives your church website a completely different look. Um, and once you click on one, you'll see you have more options uh, that kind of get more into the coloring and um, design of it. So um, you can sort through these and uh, click through them and see which ones you like. Uh, once you click on one, you can hold down over one and it will show you a preview of your church website. Uh, and then when you release, it'll go away. Um, so I, I'll show you how to change to one. So I, I like this uh, this light theme. So I'll click on that and I'll apply the theme. Now when I close out of themes, I can see my church website has changed to that theme. Um, and one of the biggest differences between all of the different themes is uh, the location of things like the menu. Um, so you'll see on this light theme, the menu is up here at the top and it's transparent. Now if I go back, I could change to... Uh, this minimal theme. I'll select that one and apply it. And you'll see that the menu is now down on the side here. Um, so it, it changes the, the look and feel of your website without changing the functionality of it. Uh, but I'll go back to themes and I like the material theme. I like this green one, so I'll apply that. Uh, and I'll go back to, just to show you. So this is no longer transparent, but it's up at the top. Uh, back under themes, once you choose your theme, um, then you'll want to uh, go in and customize it a little. So you can click this customize tab and you can change the colors and uh, different attributes of your th uh, theme itself. You can change the font family um, and you can also add custom um, headers and uh, logos and things like that. So right now this is the, the logo that's on our church website. Um, you can see it's just this normal text. Uh, but if I go to customize and I select browse, I think I have one uploaded here. Uh, yep, right there. Um, so you can upload your church logo and hit save. And save those changes. And now you'll see that our logo is up here at the top of this church website. Um, so it's really easy to switch that out. Um, next we have styles. Um, the more fonts and font choices you have on your website, the, the longer it will take your church website to load. Um, so it's always better to have fewer uh, fonts to choose from, and as well as uh, saving on load time. And it'll also keep your website looking more consistent um, and keep your ministries all kind of on the same page. Um, so when you have your youth director um, going in and creating the youth page, they'll, they'll choose from these fonts to keep it consistent with the adult um, Bible study page, maybe. Um, and you can always add extra fonts, um, but again, it will slow down the speed of your website. And it'll also um, make things a little less consistent. So you'll see we have this test um, font here, and that's much different from uh, the rest of the website. So you'll see it'll make things look a, a lot different. Um, but to add styles, you simply click this Add Style button, and you can uh, create an inline 
uh, style or a block style. Inline is um, it's in the lines of your paragraph. Uh, block just means it's like a header, so it'll it'll appear here between the paragraphs. Um, you can change all of these different settings and uh, make it as make it look exactly how you want it to. Uh, and later on, I'll show you where those uh, where you can access those styles. Um, next, we have the advanced tab, uh, and just like it says, it's more advanced kind of stuff. Um, so if you if your church has someone on staff who uh, knows HTML and CSS and uh, is able to do um, some advanced coding and programming. This would be where they can add some custom scripts and headers. Uh, but again, most churches probably don't have someone that's too into this kind of stuff. Um, so it's there if you need it, uh, but most people won't need to pay attention to it at all. Um, you can just go with the base package. Uh, and then to get even more advanced, we have this edit button down here. Uh, and you'll see when you click on that, it says that um, you can't edit this current theme that you're on, uh, but you can clone the theme, uh, which when we go back to browse, you'll see that I have a few down here at the bottom that uh, are repeats. So light two is a clone of light. Um, so if I was to change to that theme, I'll apply that theme. And now I go to edit. You can see I can uh, access all of the code. Um, oops. Sorry, I hit the back button on accident. I can access all of the code in this menu, or in this theme, and uh, really tweak it to my own likings. So if you have someone who's a web developer at your church and they really want to get in and change all of this different kind of stuff, um, they have access to it. Now the only uh, downfall to doing that is then uh, you no longer have uh, the, the uh, regular updates available. Um, so when you clone the theme, we no longer are able to update it for you. Uh, so you'll have to contact us and we can walk you through that update process. Um, but if you don't clone the theme and you just use one of ours, uh, then those updates will happen automatically for you. So I'm gonna change my theme back to this one. Uh, and that's basically everything there is uh, with the themes. You can adjust it as much as you want to or as little as you want to. Uh, so now back here, we have our theme set and we have our users in there. Um, so now we really need to start adding content and uh, making our website have all of the things we need in it and uh, look the way we want it to. So right now I'm on my home page uh, and I can really uh, easily change the, the way this looks and what it has on it uh, by simply clicking this edit page button over here. So I'll click that and out pops this little drawer. Um, I can change the layout of this page. So right now I have one uh, row across the top and three smaller columns below it. Um, but I could change this one uh, large uh, area that I can add content to. I could have two uh, columns. I could have two columns with one smaller. And there's lots of different options here. Um, but I like this with a row across the top and three in the bottom. Um, you can change this page to be published or a draft. Um, you would change it to a draft if you need to work on it and you don't want people to see it. Um, However, I, I probably wouldn't do that with my home page, uh, just because that's where people are going to be going all the time. Uh, you can change the URL of this page um, and add a page title and meta description, and those are used for uh, like analytic uh, reasons. And uh, when you uh, search on Google for your website, it'll pull information from these to help find your church. Um, so I, I can change all of that. I can click in here uh, and edit this individual box, each of these. Uh, and this is our WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. Um, so it's a l very similar to uh, your text editors like Microsoft Word. Um, you can add text in here. So I'll, I'll just type text uh, just to show you what it looks like. Um, and I can make it bold. I can underline it. I can do all these, or italicize, do all these different things. And this is where you would uh, set your styles. So those styles that we created before, uh, they're all available to you now. Um, so I could change it to a heading one if I wanted to make it uh, the main content on the page. I could make it a heading two to make it a uh, different color and a little smaller. And you can just sort through all of these and make it exactly how you want it to. I could use this uh, odd looking test one. <laughs> uh, however, that doesn't seem to go with our theme at all. So I'll change back to heading two. Um, you can add links into your uh, your WYSIWYG editor here. So if I wanted this to link to a different page, I could uh, highlight it and at click this link button. 
and I could send it to any URL or I could uh, send it to a page within my site. Um, there's lots of different options and flexibility. Um, so there's lots of different tools out, up here that you can um, adjust and change. You can see the source code to uh, edit the URL or the, excuse me, HTML. So I'm going to get rid of that actually. Um, so, but I like just this image here. I could link to this Bible study page um, simply by click, clicking the image and clicking the link button and send it to the Bible study page. Um, I'm going to exit out of that for now, though. Um, so it's easy to set up this page to send people to the right uh, content within, within your website, and it's easy to update this page. And when you're done, make sure you hit save, uh, and it'll keep all of those changes that you've made. Um, but most church websites don't just have a home page. Uh, they have other pages that you can access as well. Uh, and you can see this is our menu up here, and we have lots of different pages on this uh, fictional website. Um, so to add to this list, uh, you would click on this Pages button up here. And you'll see this is the same list that we saw back here on the menu. Under Welcome, we have Welcome, What We Believe, Calendar. On this Pages, we have Welcome, Welcome, What We Believe, Calendar. Um, so these lists are the same uh, as the menus that you'll have on your church website. Um, to add to this list, these are the ones that are available. These are the pages that are available that we're not currently using. Um, so if we wanted to add the youth page to our uh, our uh, menu navigation, we would simply drag it over uh, and drop it there and save those changes. And now when I click out of here and go to welcome, you can see we have the youth tab under here. So it's easy to edit these menus and make them look exactly how you want them to and uh, be able to access the content that you need to. Um, to these uh, buttons up here are the category buttons and you'll see um, back here that's what these are up the menu across the top here. These are categories. Um, you can't click on them. They won't take you to an individual page. They'll just open up the menu beneath it. Uh, and that's because, well, church website or websites in general in the past uh, a lot of times would have pages uh, category pages where you could click on this button and it'll take you to a page where you can then access this other content as well. Um, however, uh, probably half of the people looking at your website these days are on some sort of mobile device. Uh, and on those, to open the menu, you have to actually click on it uh, and it'll pop down. Whereas if you tried to open it up when it was closed by clicking on it, um, then you would actually go to the category page. So. Um, most websites nowadays don't have category pages. These are just categories uh, that open up the menus that you can now go and click on these actual pages. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> uh, so you can add categories um, so that you can access uh, these other menus underneath them. And you do that by clicking this Add Category button. So I could click that and it'll pop one down here and I could uh, set it to whatever, whatever I want it to be. Uh, I'll just put random for now. Um, so now I have a random category that I could put things under. Uh, but I'm actually going to delete that. There we go. Um, and get rid of that so that we don't need it. Um, and now we'll add a page. So we have categories, but under that we have these different pages. And you'll see we have different kinds of pages. These um, have different icons on them. And I'll explain what those are uh, in a moment here. But just to add a regular page like the welcome page here, you'll click on this add page button. And you'll see there's a, a list of different types that you can use. Um, there's feed pages, group pages, and we'll get into both of those in a little bit here. Uh, but then we also have these templates um, that, to help you get started uh, and give you some ideas of what sorts of pages you may want to have on your website. Uh, but you could start with just a blank page here uh, and create that page. And then you can add whatever name you want it to have. Uh, again, I'll do just random. Uh, and then once you have that in there, you could drag it over and put it wherever you want. And you have another extra page now. Uh, and you'll see when I first drag it in there, it's in draft mode. Sorry about that. Uh, meaning that it's not viewable to everyone right now um, unless you're an administrator who can see it. Um, and that's because we're working on it and getting it set up. Uh, but for now, I'm well, actually, and you can publish that page um, simply by clicking on it and then uh, clicking the Publish button down here. 
So I can publish it. Uh, and right now it's set to members only. So people who are logged in will be able to see it, um, meaning it's a private page. Uh, but I could set it to a public page where anyone can come to the website and see it by simply clicking public. And now uh, it's viewable, it's published, and anyone can see it. Um, you can duplicate that page by clicking duplicate down here. So if you have one that uh, you've started that you want to just uh, go off of and tweak to create another page, you can click it and click duplicate, and it will add on another one over here. I'm going to delete that actually, so I'll click it and hit delete. And I'm actually going to delete this first one as well. Um, so it's easy to add pages and categories to your menu um, so that you can make sure that all your different ministries in your church have their own page and um, can get the content that they need to out there. Uh, let's see. So next we're going to look at the different groups. Um, to add a group, um, you'll see that these little, oh, yeah, these icons here with the, the person with the circle around them, that's a group. Um, so this is our youth group page. Uh, and to add a group, again, you just click on the add page button and select groups. Uh, you can create that. Um, so I would just create a group. I'll, I'll name it random. Actually, let me, let me not do that real quick. Uh, delete that. Oh, sorry. I think I need to create it and then delete it. Um, let's see, I'm going to create a confirmation group um, just to show you what it would look like to communicate with a different uh, group like your confirmation class. So I'm going to delete this one and start over. Uh, so now I'll go up here and select group and create the page. And I'll name it confirmation. And now I can drag that over uh, and I'll put it under Sunday school again um, because we do it on Sunday mornings, I guess. Uh, and so now that it's created and it's set to members only, uh, anyone who's a member um, of our church and has a login will be able to see that page. Uh, to go to that page, I can just simply click on it here. Oops, sorry. Do, always remember to save your changes, otherwise it won't actually take effect. Uh, so now I can click on it. Ah, it's still saying not saved. Let me just exit out of here real quick. Uh, you can see that it added it to our menu here as well, so I can click there to go to that page. Uh, and now that we have our group page um, created, it's set to draft so that um, it won't actually be published until I change that. And I can do that again by clicking this edit page button over here. Um, this is our home page for our group and I want to edit that so I'll open that up. I can change it from a draft to published so that people are able to access it. I can edit all of this information as well. I can change the layout on this uh, home page as well for this group. So I'll go with the three across the bottom again and I'll hit save. Uh, I can also go in and I can change all of this information just like I could on the home page of our website. So I can add images in here, I can add links, I can add uh, videos and all sorts of different things. So uh, whatever you need your website to have and your group pages to have, um, you're able to add that in. Um, so that's our home page. Uh, you can edit that as much as you need to. Uh, next we have this discussion tab. Um, and especially for groups like confirmation, this could be a really useful tab. Um, if you, if the pastor has a, a comment they, or a question they want the students to think about throughout the week uh, or to even discuss, they can type that in here and students can respond to it uh, and ask questions to, to the pastor about um, something they learned in class that was confusing to them or they just had a question later on, they could ask that here. Uh, they could ask for a prayer requests um, and the pastor could make announcements. Uh, so there's all sorts of uses for this discussion page. Um, and again, you can respond to other people's comments. So if the pastor asks a question, uh, the students can reply to it uh, right under it so you can see the whole discussion. Next, we have this events tab. Uh, and this is a calendar just for our confirmation group. Um, we also have a church calendar uh, where you can see all of the different things going on in the church. And you can uh, select what calendars you want to be able to view uh, simply by checking them on or off. Um, so maybe we don't need to see Alter Guild, uh, but we want to see Confirmation and Youth. Um, 
and children's ministry. Uh, so you can see all of the different calendars that are important to you, uh, but you don't have to see everything that's going on all at once because that could get a little, whoops, a little overwhelming if all of these are checked on and uh, you see everything going on at the church, uh, especially when a lot of it doesn't pertain to you. Uh, but I'll just leave those on for now. Back under our confirmation group. So we can add events um, simply by going to the events page uh, and double clicking. So maybe we're going to meet on Sunday morning. So I'll double click on the, this Sunday morning and I can create an event for that day. Um, I could give it a title, add it to other calendars if I want. So if I wanted to say um, go to the confirmation group, but also go to the Bible study group um, because it happens on mon Sunday morning and it's one of our Bible study offerings, uh, I could send it to both of those calendars. But I'll just do the confirmation group. You can add the location. Uh, that way you know which rooms are being used uh, on each Sunday or each day of the week um, and you don't double book it. Um, you can add a time and end time. Uh, you could say that this event goes all day, maybe if it's a lock-in or something like that. Uh, you could say the, this event repeats uh, so that you could have it scheduled for every Sunday morning, uh, like if it's a, an adult Bible study or something like that, that you're going to do every Sunday morning. You could just have it repeat. Um, you can say when it starts and when it ends. You can add a description to this event so that people know what it's all about. Uh, you can send out invitations to people. Um, so if you uh, one, first you have to add people to this group. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that once we add some people. Uh, but you can send it to all of the people that are in this group or just select a, a couple that you want to. And you could also send out reminders ahead of time um, to help people remember that they have the Bible study coming up the day before or a week before or an hour before even um, just to help them forget that it's not coming or that it is coming up. So we'll cancel that for now. And so, uh, like I said, you can, um, let me get back to it. You can create events simply by double clicking on the date, or you can click this new event uh, button and add the date in there. Um, like I said, you need to add the members to this group, however. So we'll click on the members uh, button here. And you'll see right now, uh, I'm logged in as Luke Booth. He's one of our developers here. Uh, and I'm the group leader. Um, but if I wanted, if I was setting up this page, uh, but then someone else was leading it, I could always add them in later. So maybe Dave is going to be the actual leader. Uh, so I'll select him and add him. And then I can click next to his name and change his role. So right now he's just a regular group member, but I could change him from a group leader. Uh, I could promote him to a leader. So now there's two group leaders in this. And it, if I wasn't going to be part of it anymore, I could take myself off by uh, selecting that and changing my role. Um, and then I could always leave the group if I needed to, but I'm not going to do that right now um, because then I wouldn't be able to edit it anymore. Uh, you can also allow people to um, ask to join the group, and you can uh, approve or not approve those requests right here. Um, you can e invite members. So if you think that uh, Howard would want to be part of this group, you can invite him rather than simply adding him yourself. Uh, and once you have people in this group, so I'll just add a few um, people into here. Once you have them in there, you can select uh, certain people. You can email just a few of them, or you could uh, select all of them and send an email. Um, so it pops open right in your uh, your uh, email client. Uh, I'm using Outlook, uh, so I, it will send to this confirmation group. And if you double click on that, you'll see it has a lot of these different numbers, uh, and that's just a relay chain that um, the email gets sent through us here at Concordia Technology Solutions to the people in your church. Uh, that way it doesn't come across as spam every time you send email. Um, so that's a little behind the scenes kind of stuff, but uh, it's really easy to send emails uh, to your groups uh, simply by selecting the names and then emailing them or clicking email all. Uh, yeah, so that's everything with members. Um, you can edit this group by clicking edit this group. Uh, you can add the name and the description. You can also add a summary down here about the group. Um, you can add extra pages to this group. So if you had uh, notes that you wanted people to have each week, you could add a notes page and add that. Then you can uh, check it to add it to this menu over here. So if I leave it unchecked, you'll see it doesn't appear over here, but when I check it, then it appears. Uh, and I can um, go to that page uh, and edit it 
I'm not sure why that's not working. Hmm. There we go. Now I'm on the notes page and I can edit the page. Uh, I can add uh, some notes for um, this week. So we'll say 7, uh, 28, 17. And I can highlight that and then uh, create a link to a different page with notes or to a file that uh, the users can download. So if I have a, a Word document or a PDF that I want them to download, I could attach that to that link. Uh, so I'll save that and exit out of there and go back to edit this group. So you can add different pages depending on what you need. Um, and you can change who's able to see the different pages uh, in your group. Um, so right now everything's set to unite users only. So people who have an e uh, email address and login information to your website, they're able to see all of this. Uh, but maybe we want everyone to see uh, what's going on on our homepage and we want uh, people in the public to be able to access uh, so the information about this group. So we could set that to everyone. Maybe this discussion page um, the pastor wants to have uh, some intimate discussions with the students so that they can uh, really share uh, and have discussions together. Um, so you could set that to group members only so that only people who are in this group are able to see that page. Or you could even set it to group leaders only so students can ask questions um, to the pastor or other leaders without feeling uh, nervous about the reactions of other students. Uh, but we'll set it to group members only. Um, so that the whole group can have a discussion together. Uh, you can change your events page so that everyone can see it or just the members of your church website can see it. So I'll leave that there. You could have your uh, church able to see the pastor's notes and things like that by leaving that uh, under Unite Users. And uh, maybe you only want the pastor or group leaders to be able to see who the members of this group are. So you could set that to uh, only group leaders. Uh, and then you can also change who can join this group. So you can have it set to uh, either anyone logged into the site can join or only people I've invited. So we'll set it to that uh, since this is a more private group. And you can update the, the group settings. Uh, and lastly, we have these membership settings. And uh, really, this is just uh, setting up your notifications. So uh, if you want to see everything that's coming across in here, you could leave it where it's at. If you don't want to see anything, uh, you could change that as well. Uh, and you can also leave this group if uh, you're no longer part of it. And we'll go back to the home page here. Um, so that's basically everything there is with group pages. Um, they're really helpful tools to be able to communicate with your ministry. Um, so if the youth ministry has their own group, um, they can send event information and notes and uh, they could have discussions on this page. Uh, without the whole church having to see everything that's coming across from this group. So it's a great page for discussion to happen and uh, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, when we go back here, um, a lot of churches have blogs. Uh, and you'll see we have a blog down here or announcement feeds and things like that. So, and these are things that uh, you post regularly and people can subscribe to and uh, view those posts that are coming up. So here's one that we've created. Uh, it's just an example post. Um, you create these blog pages by going back to pages and add a page, and then you select this feed page here, uh, and you can create them that way. So you see uh, over here in this, we have one over here. Oh, we have a couple. We have sermons. We have blog. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, we have pastor's blog over here and announcements. So maybe I want to add the announcements over here. So when I save those changes and I go back, you'll see announcements was added to our menu up here and we have that extra feed. Uh, so you'll see the church picnic is coming up soon, things like that. Um, so a lot of churches use these to share sermon notes and um, share announcements and things that are coming up and uh, just helpful information for people. Uh, maybe your pastor wants to share his sermons uh, so that people who are shut in will be able to see them. Uh, you can create a sermons page and uh, add your sermons to this page each week uh, by clicking the edit page button and it will pop down this new post area uh, and you can create just a regular uh, text post or you can add in a video uh, if you record your services 
um, an audio file if you just record the audio. Um, and people will be able to come in here and uh, view those. And you can also change when this uh, post is posted by clicking this draft button down here. Right now it's set to draft so that uh, it's not available for anyone. But you could publish it right away so that it goes straight up to the website uh, and people can access it. Or you can schedule it. So if you um, set this all up on a Friday afternoon, uh, but you don't want it to actually publish until the video is in there on Sunday afternoon, um, you could schedule it for Sunday evening maybe. Um, so that it goes up on your website that Sunday without you having to go back in here and set it all up that day. Um, you can also change how many posts you see on your feed. Um, so right now, we probably don't have enough to actually set, uh, but under announcements, we have, we have three of them. I could change that to two and save that. And now you'll only see two posts that are happening. Uh, I could set it to five. And if we had more than three, they, two more would be available. Um, so you can set how many posts per page you want to have available. And uh, after uh, you go past the amount you have set, uh, you'll then have these buttons down here to go to the next page and see what other ones there are. Uh, you can allow people to comment on your posts. Um, and you can also set it so that you have to moderate those comments. Uh, that way you can see what's being commented before you allow it up on your website. Um, so it really depends on the settings that you want. So we'll save that, close it. Um, so it's really easy to get information out, uh, and communicate with your church about the different things going on. And uh, that's what you would use feeds for. Uh, and you can see uh, everything that's going out from your church by going to this activity button up here. Uh, You'll see if there's comments on your blogs and things like that, you would moderate them from here. Um, you can see your event log. So when things are changed on your website, they would appear here. Uh, you can see what those changes are uh, to keep track of those. You also have this email log to see what emails are going out each week. Uh, and as well as the activity button, we have this post button. Um, so when you do create new posts, you can edit them and rearrange them up here. Uh, so if I wanted this five books, every parent should read blog post to actually go to our announcements page for some reason, I could click on that uh, and change the feed so then I could set it to announcement page. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. I could also make it a draft if I needed to change something. I could uh, adjust it that way or I could even delete it. Uh, you can see when things are posted um, and just keep track of all your different posts that you add to your website. Uh, let's see. I know there's one other thing I wanted to show. Um, your members tab here. Uh, when you're logged in as a, a user um, or at any of the different levels, as long as you're logged in, you'll be able to see this members tab here. And when you click on that, it will show you your membership directory. Um, so this is your, your main church directory. And you'll see we have a bunch of people in here. Uh, and you can see who's all part of that, the Abbott family, for instance, and where they live and their phone number and all of that information. But you can also click on that and go even deeper. Uh, you can see information from each of the people, uh, their numbers and things like that. Uh, you could also click on individuals to get even more information. So you can see all of the groups that Dave is a part of and you can see his recent activity and all of that. Um, and all of this is editable. Uh, you can change your own profile. So uh, rather than the church secretary having to log in every time uh, someone moves and change it for them, uh, Dave could log in and edit his own profile and uh, add a new phone number or a new address and things like that and update his own profile. So it uh, takes a little bit of the work off of the church secretary or church workers uh, and allows your members and lay people to help out with that kind of stuff. Uh, let me go back to the members directory here. Uh, and this syncs with uh, both Church 360 members uh, and with Shepherd staff. So uh, when you make changes here, it will also happen over there or vice versa. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing. I think that's basically everything. Um, so if there's any questions, go ahead and ask them now. Otherwise, uh, I would wanted to put this up here so that you can see uh, if you want to start a 30-day trial, you can do that at any time by going to 360unite.com and trying the software out to see if it works for your ministry. 
Um, you can also talk to our software support team or our software sales team, um, and they would be able to help you uh, figure out what would be the best fit for you. Um, you can uh, here's their information if you want to talk to them. You can email them or give them a call, and they can talk you through all of the different options we have. Uh, they're very knowledgeable about our uh, software and um, can give you any information you're looking for. Um, and again, here's my information in case you have any questions later on. Um, you can't think of any right now. Uh, feel free to email me or give me a call, and I would love to walk you through any of this. I'll just wait a few more minutes to see if there's any um, questions that come up. Again, here's the information for the free trial. Go to 360unite.com to start your free trial. You can also get a demo from our uh, sales team, and they can walk you through the software to show you how it would work for your particular ministry. And again, here's my number and their number. I'm not seeing any questions, so uh, with that, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining me today, and I hope that this uh, information and this software will be of a benefit for your uh, ministry and for your congregation. So thank you so much, and have a great day.